hi lovers welcome back to my channel my name is Chema of Chema Stitches um, first of all I want to thank you guys because our small community is growing thanks to all of you who have stayed through and uh, who have subscribed and who watch our videos and like them like I appreciate all of you too much thank you so much and um uh, if this video at the end of the day is helpful, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and uh, share the video as well. I mean, you can share it and uh, when you try yours out, you can also let us know. You can join our small Facebook community, Creative Tailoring and Styling, and you can drop the pictures and videos of your work and we can talk about it. If you have any illustration requests, you can drop them on the group and we'll also talk about it and then I can give you answers to the questions, the ones I have answers to. I don't know either. And um, thank you so much. So today we're going to be making a bustier top with one sleeve that is exaggerated and exaggerated sleeve as you can see on the top right corner of the video so please stay to the end of the video and um i see you here are the materials we're going to be working with here i have uh, two yards of ankara fabric i have a wadding for the bust area this is a stay that we're going to be ironing to the ankara and this is the lining piece now we have our pattern paper we have a matching zipper so you can see that the, the, the Ankara has black in it, has yellow, has blue, and I've chosen to use a black zip for it. And then the thread as well, we're going to use a black thread for it. We we'll have our fabric um, scissors. We also have our paper scissors and the tongue around. And the tape rule, a marker for the pattern paper, the rulers that we're using, our paper uh, tape for our paper, uh, pattern paper, for adjustments we have pins we need our pins and uh, let's get to it the length i want it to be is uh, 20 inches that's directly on my lower abdomen and um, i'm going to be marking the 20 inches i'm going to mark 21 inches because i'll be needing one inch to conceal my sewing to sew in seam okay and this method is because um this is so, so that the when I'm cutting the fabric, the Ankara is going to be 21 inches and the uh, lining is going to be 20 inches so that we can use the lining piece to fold in and sew in seam. We're going to see that as we progress. Anyway, so let me mark the 21 inches all the way. Now for this 21, we're going to be dividing the paper into two, the front piece and the back piece. And to divide that, you're going to divide your, the biggest part of your measurement into two, and you can add two inches to it. So my my boss divided by my boss is thirty five, divided into two is eight point seven five. Now I'm going to be adding two inches to it to give me ten point seven five that I'm going to be using for this. Okay, go ahead and mark your, the ten point seven five. Mark another 10.85 and um, we have uh, 10.8 on both sides both for the front and the back piece so let's transfer our measurements we have 10.8 here and 10.8 here it's time to now transfer the measurements the shoulder measurement is 7.5 we're going to measure 7.5 here For the back, we're measuring 7.5 plus 1 inch for zip allowance, that's 8.5. So I'm going to be marking the zip allowance and indicate it. It's very important. Because if you don't indicate it, you might forget that you've added it. And then you go and double add. You go and add it again. It should not alter your draft. 7.5. To get the armhole measurements, 
um, if you've been following my videos and my uh, drafting, um, you'll know that to get that, how we calculate it is our boss divided by 6 plus 1.5. So this works for everybody. It's a standard. So first, you're going to take down the one inch slanting for the arm, for the shoulder, the shoulder one inch slanting. Then from that slant one inch, you will now take, take out your arm hole measurements, which is 7.3 for here. So I'm going to go ahead and mark out this 7.3 and rule it. Connect this line. So now for the front, you have to take out one and a half for one and a half inch for the shoulder slanting. The, the back is one inch for the front, it is one and a half. Now for us to have the same armhole, what I have to do is measure from the shoulder line to the armhole line to get the full length and I'll just transfer it here and it is 8.3. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this as well. Roll it down. And then connect these two lines. Now to slant and curve your armhole, what I do is I measure from this slanting, measure uh, for the back for the back piece. I just fold it in half. I fold my tape in half from the slanted line to the line of the armhole, and then you come in to the measurement by half an inch. With your straight glue, you connect this half an inch to this place, and then with the armhole ruler. You curve it. Give it your armhole curve. Now, for the front, I come up by three inches. From the armhole line, I come up by three inches, and then I come in here by seven, zero point seven five, and then I roll it to the to the slanting, to the one and a half inch slanting. <coughs> And then with the armhole rule, I will also connect it as well. Now, even though this dress we are making is going to be an off shoulder, it, uh, it, uh, it definitely does not have a shoulder line. So, but we are going to also create the shoulder because we are drafting with a the pattern. Then we cannot alter the pattern. Okay. So, um, so the the for to get my uh, neckline, I divide my bust by twelve. And that usually gives me 2.9 something. So now I'm going to be, I just uh, take it up to 3 inches instead of using 2.9. 3 inch by 3 inch for the front. With the armhole room, you connect it. And then use your stretch rule to connect the slant line, the, arm, the shoulder slant. Then for the back, you take out the three inches as well and come down one inch down and then you connect it so i'm using my free hand to connect that part then use your ruler to connect it to the one inch slanting okay now usually when i take my measurements <coughs> the front and the back the back is usually two inch two inches shorter than the front and we're going to be introducing that here as well. So to get that, this is what I'm going to do. Come up, come here, and I take out two inches from the back measurement. This is very important. To avoid gaping and to give you perfect fit, you have to do this, okay? Now, another thing you also do for the uh, back piece to give it a perfect, perfect fit so that the zip will not gape at the back is at this zip allowance you are going to take out half an inch from the zip allowance you take up the half an inch you can come up to your so you can come up to where you can take out the half an inch up to where your dart can stay now for my dart line i can measure up to say 11 inches or 11.5 so i'm going to come up here by that select by and then mark the half an inch I hope my explanation is making sense. So I'm going to connect this half an inch for the zip snatching. This is going to help the zip to relax properly at the back and not give. Now from this place, I'm just going to slant it all the way to the end of the line. So just connect it to the end of the line. Now we're going to be cutting out this half an inch. And when we're sewing the, the dress, we will still use one inch for the zip. 
so that one inch we're taking out at the back is for snatching it and for better um, fitting okay so now that we've done that let's bring in the dart for the front for the back sorry so the dart i'm going to come down just like 11 inches the way i've said and then i'm going to measure for my dart the nipple to nipple measurement and my nipple to nipple measurement is eight which is divided which is four when you divide it by two i'm just going to go ahead and mark the four inches up to here connect the line and then for my dart i want to use one and a half inches which is 0 0.75 on both sides so here we are let's rule with that Okay, so we have the dart for the back. Okay, now let's go back to the now let's go back to the uh, to the introducing the horizontal measurements. Our waist measurements for this dress is supposed to stop at my um, exactly at the lower at my lower abdomen. So the measurement for there is twenty nine. So 29 divided by 4 will give me 7.25. I will now add the 1.5 inch that. And we have 8.75. So I'm going to start from after the zip allowance. Please note, I'll start from after the zip allowance to introduce this, to put, impute this measurement. So 8.75 here. Then the bust, the under bust measurement, under my bust is, um, 27 so 27 divided by 4 will be 6.75 plus now if you look at this place around this area where we're taking this measurement the dots we're taking out here is like uh, 0 0.6 so I'm going to be acting adding the 0 0.6 to the measurement and I will have 7.35 so I'm going to be marking 7.35 here now the bust is uh, 35 inches divided by 4 and we have 8.75 so I'm going to go ahead and connect these lines okay to avoid the pointiness I'm just going to smooth in here a little smoothing it out all right, that is our back piece. Now let's go back to the front and continue the front. So for the front, I'm going to introduce all our measurements from the shoulder to the top of the bust. This is before your cleavage. It's seven inches. I'm going to just mark the seven inch. Shoulder to my bust is 10 inches. Shoulder to my under bust, I'm working with 13 inches. So. 10 and 13 inches and then the waist measurement I will, I will, I'm working with 17 inches okay let me roll these lines and indicate them in writing okay so this is the bust B this is the under bust UB this is the waist W and this is top of the bust TB and here is my abdomen So now we have to work on the dart. So for the front dart, we're working with the same nipple to nipple measurement divided by two, which is four inches. I'm just going to bring this four inches all the way. Now I'll take out the dart. For the waist and the um, lower abdomen, I'm going to be taking 0 0.75 on both sides which is one inch one and sorry which is 1.5 inch <clears throat> like we have here for the waist area the same thing i'm taking 0 0.75 on both sides which is one and a half inch together now for the under bust this uh, center front i'm going to take out 0 0.75 as well 
but for the side front i'm going to be taking out 1.7 1.25 together will give me two inches now let's join these lines together this one is basically going to be a straight line because the measurements are the same then here we are going to be having this and this smoothing here a bit okay now to connect and the cut the and connect and to connect and then curve the bust from the bust i like to come down by one inch and then go up as well by one inch then for my top of the bust to snatch the top of the bust and curve it properly i have to go in by half inch of both sides which is one inch in total <coughs> So with this uh, curve, the armhole curve, I'm going to go ahead and curve it. For the side front, this is the side front by the way, SF, and this is center front, CF. For the side front, I'm going to be using this inner part, the curved area in the inner part of the rule. So from this one, one inch I've, I've brought down here, I'm going to connect the dart line, like so. Then for this side, I'm just going to reverse the rule and draw the line as well to connect. Now for the top side, I'll use the, the reverse side to do it. The same thing on this side. Okay, now that we have this, um, I would like to smoothen this place so it doesn't come out as a pointy. Let's smoothen it up a little bit. Okay have this so now i'm going to be introducing the other measurements the horizontal measurements so for this abdomen here we have 29 inches divided by four plus the one and a half inch that one eight point seven five so i'm going to go ahead and mark the eight point seven five and then for the waist area we have the waist to be 28, 28 divided by 4 plus 1.5, this is 8.5. And then for the under boss, the under boss is 27, 27 divided by 4 plus 2 inches, the dart under the uh, bust area, that under boss is 2 inches. And we have 8.75. <clears throat> now for the bust, we have 35 divided by 4, which is 8.75 as well. Okay, so now I'm going to join these lines here to here. Here to here. this place okay we have this connected if you're looking at this now you will see that we have our basic pattern ready even with the alterations now for the front that is two inches longer than the back we have to make it in a way that when we join the two of them it will align so for that we have to take out the dart from the bust area so from the bust line i'm going to come down on this line by two inches which is the two inches we took out for the back piece okay now i'm going to connect it to my bust <coughs> now this is for bust uh, 35 34 33 and all the way down okay you go straight to the bust point but if it's someone who is busty what you have to do for first of all is you will you come in uh, go out of the go to the towards the side front you go out by one inch and then from that one one inch you will connect it so i'm using a black pen to, to distinct the two lines this black one is for a busty person this is for the normal a small cup like us like 34 35 and all the way down okay so when you, if it's person is a busty person, from here, 
that you've drawn this to this place when you are cutting it out so let me use my paper paper scissors when you're cutting out the bats let's cut it out okay i've cut it out so now for someone who is busty when it's time for you to fold in this slanted that fold in this that you will come in here and you will cut and you tear this place opening you're supposed to tear this opening all the way to this place to the one end and then you will now fold it in now so that this thing does not clash let me just make a cut here so that's the front and the back so that this one i'm folding it it will not affect this place okay so but since it's for my me that is wearing it i'm just going to go ahead and, and fold it exactly on the first line we drew this is the blue line that's the line that leads all the way to the bust okay so i'm going to fold this in like so and then fold it directly on that bust line all right so what we're going to do now is hold it down with the paper tape so with this paper clip, I'm just going to hold it down. Here we are. Now, if you when you now you if you look closely, you will see that there is now a shift in this side. You will see that this place is now looking like this. The line here and here there's not a line. So what you're going to do in this situation is you take your curved drill. And you come here, you connect this line to the armhole line. So it aligns. This is it. And when we cut out these pieces and place it together, you will see that it will align perfectly with the back piece. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it out and uh, show us what we've done. So now we are supposed to cut out this place as well but let me first explain something <clears throat> now if you place this place together from this armhole to the end of the this thing you see that they've now aligned even though the front is two inches longer than the back because of this slanting that uh, that we have done at the side we have been able to align the front piece and the back piece so when you sew it together everything will align okay that aside now this dress is supposed to be uh, not just an option that's supposed to stop directly under the bust area because it's having just one sleeve and the sleeve is attached as you can see it on the screen is attached only to one side so we're going to um, cut it in a way that the dress will stop directly under your armhole so to do that you're not going to be following this armhole line you have marked and what you're going to do now is come up like so by from your arm, arm hole mark you can come up by one and a half inch you mark it come up by one and a half inch and mark and you just and roll it across now this is where your measurement is going to the same thing for the front piece you come up by one and a half inch and mark one and a half inch and mark So we're going to cut this out and this if you notice for the front piece this one and a half inch stops exactly at the top of my bust wow, that is so cool i wouldn't say it's a standard i don't know if it's a standard but <laughs> it just matches okay so now i'm going to just cut it out, out. all right
Now this is our measurement. Let me also cut that that half inch for the dart, for the um, half inch from the zip to avoid zip gaping and bulging. Please also note that when you are sewing this dress, you will still use one inch for the dart, for the zip. Even though you took out half an inch, the half an inch to avoid the zip from gaping, from folding at the back of the person. You see when you sew, attach a, attach a zip and the person wears it, it's poofing out. That is what causes it. Okay, so we have our pattern paper complete now. Look at it. As well. So let's go ahead and place it on the fabric and cut out our pattern. Now when you are working with an entire fabric, it's always important to know the pattern and uh, direction of the design in the Ankara. Now some Ankara have directions that look like trees. Now if you are cutting it, you are expected to cut, in it, cut it in a way that the tree is not facing downwards. So if you are cutting with an Ankara, always know your fabric and know what the fabric looks like and the design on the fabric so you can follow through. Now this fabric I'm working with has a nice pattern and if you look at this pattern it's like a uh, like a burning bush burning bush or half a half a moon facing all the way up so i'm going to be cut, cutting all of all the pieces like this so you're not you're not going to cut the front like this and then reverse it and cut the back it will not make sense so all of them will be cut in this direction and if the material is enough as well for your exaggerated sleeve when you're cutting it because the zip is going to, the sleeve is going to be very full. When you are cutting it for exaggerated sleeve, you can also go ahead and do the same thing. Cut it in a way that the, all the pattern is facing like this. It gives your dress better fitting and it makes it look like you exactly know what you are doing. Okay? So let's cut. Alright, so I have pinned it down. As you can see. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and impute the sewing allowance. So for this one, so I'm working with half inch on the middle side. This, this chalk is too close. Okay, how do I have a chalk that looks like the fabric that has the color of the fabric? That's going to be hard. Okay, so I'm going to be marking half an inch all the way. All the way here. Sides were marking one and a half inch for the sewing allowance using one and a half inch this is one and a half inch for the uh, side for the sewing and half inch all the way around we've cut out the pattern piece we have the one uh, and a half inch for the side sewing, you can use one inch, one and a half, two inches, whatever is okay with you. Then I have half an inch to join the pieces together. Then for the back, we have just one and a half inch, and then a quarter of an inch on the top for folding in with the lining. So remember that I said when you're cutting the lining, you're going to cut the lining one inch shorter than the main fabric because we are doing inseam finishing, and the lining is going to be used to sew it inseam to come to cover up all the sewing. So please note that. All right, to go ahead and cut out the the wording, the wording piece, and the wording is going to go it go all the way from here. Now I will put the link to our previous video where I explained how you can cut the uh, the wording piece, how you can cut the wording piece, and uh, like how you draft out here and how you curve cover the pieces for the wording so it to be perfect for the bust area. So I'm going to put the link in the description um, box. I will put the link to that video, to the previous video where we've done where we explained it. So you can go and watch it to know how you can draft out your wording if that's if you need to if you need that information. Okay. Now for the back, there's a little alteration I want to make at the back. The little alteration I want to make for this back is um the lower back. The back I like to uh, slant the back a little bit. So of leaving it straight like this, I would like to come down a little bit, say one inch, because the back, I want it to have a little bit of an ease. So 
so to do that i am going to come down by one inch or one and a half inch and i'm going to just roll it all the way to here i'm going to roll it to this place let's go all the way let's just go all the way now i'm going to cut out this piece from the pattern and then cut it out as well this is to give the back a little bit of ease okay that's what 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 is doing so i'm going to now add remove it from this end please remember the cut of an inch for folding when you are doing this okay now this is how the back piece is going to be all right now if you look at this pattern the back and the front are having a little bit of similarity just that the top the bust area is bigger than this down so but when you are cutting please be very careful not to go and sew it in reverse at least the pattern of the dress will also help us if you follow the pattern of the um, Ankara. All right, let's go ahead and cut out the uh, lining piece and then go and iron the stay. Iron the stay and add the wording. Then we can come back and continue the explanations. Keep watching. I have ironed the stay on the Ankara piece, as you can see, and I've also ironed the breast pad on the Ankara piece. Here it is. And um, this the video to how I attach this and um, this uh, breast pad. I'm going to be leaving the link in the description box below. Do well to check it out. Here is the center piece and the lining for the center piece. And the lining is supposed to be one inch shorter than the main fabric, like we mentioned, so that we can do our inseam finishing properly. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim it out to get the effect we want. So it will be one inch exactly on all sides. So um, this lining piece is supposed to be one inch shorter so that we can fully cover this dress when we are covering it up. Alright, so um, and, and, and for us to do this inseam finishing, we need uh, the lining to be full coverage and that's why we are going to have the lining as a full coverage. So these are the pieces for the back piece and the front pieces. Okay, now what I want to do is um, I want to cover out this dress, this uh, top, to have a, a, an effect on the side. A slanting effect so it's not just going to be straight and stand and to do this um, I've decided I'm going to have to go up from the side by one and a half inches as you can see and then I'm going to go inside by two inches to mark exactly on the one and a half now I have to use a ruler to curve in this uh, this marking I've made to give it give us a slanted um, side and this effect is going to give the dress some somewhat like a basque effect when you wear it instead of having the side stand all right so um now to achieve this on all sides i have to also cut it on the lining piece as well so to do that i'm just going to arrange the lining piece place the main fabric on it and just trace it according to the markings i have made so I'm going to like uh, arrange this properly and then place it to get exactly how I want. Okay, so now we're going to cut it out. That way, both the lining piece and the main fabric, they are going to be having exactly the same effect. Now looking at this now is giving me ideas whether we should try and make a Basque inspired dress, a Basque effect inspired dress on our next tutorial. So what do you guys think? If you want us to make a dress that has a basket effect on it, um, do well to comment in the comment section and we will consider it. I'm actually thinking about it. I like the effect it's giving. Like if you look at the dress, the finished work, you will see that, it's, that it looks better. It has this V effect. This V effect on it and it's finer. And so, like I think we're going to have to do that. So now we're going to go ahead and... Um, join these pieces together okay we're going to be joining these pieces together and we're going to properly iron them and if you want to learn how you can iron the bust area for a bustier dress you can also check this video um, i'm attaching the link in the description box it has the full everything in it you learn how to iron a bustier around it and you know and the, it will give you a smooth finishing 
um, so the, you do have to check out the video in the description box so now we're going to go ahead and do the darts for the back pieces and then do the compilation of everything so the, the lining piece to lining piece together so the um, main fabric to main fabric together and then when we're done with this we'll do the ironing and uh, we'll continue so do well to stay to the end of the video i can't wait for you guys to try this out when you try yours out please do not forget to notify me okay so now we're going to go ahead and cut out the lining piece the, the sorry the uh sleeve now remember this for the sleeve we are trying to achieve an exaggerated sleeve now you can use the number of fabric you won't have left you can use that as much as you want no matter how big you want it now basically if we are making an exaggerated sleeve one of the secrets to it is that if the sleeve is longer than your wrist and longer than your wrist and and gets close to your fingers it has more effect so that when you wear it it's just going to be showing a little bit of your finger it is it's more finer that way it's like when it's longer and fuller it's finer so um if i had even want known i would have made it even fuller for the one i made use all the fabric left but as you can see there are still few inches left on the side that i didn't use so now to achieve this very long length i have to check out my full length of my arm which is 22 inches that's with my wrist and then i can add few inches to measure it to see where it gets close to my finger that's like five inches extra that's seven inches now i'll be needing one inch to put the elastic band at the beginning of the of the sleeve and i'll also be needing one inch to fold in the edges of the sleeve now this is going to be give, leaving us with uh 29 inches in all so i'm going to go ahead and mark 29 inches all the way now after marking the 29 inches the next thing we're going to do is uh, use our ruler to connect the dotted lines and then we're supposed to cut it out now for this for the for this where the width of the uh, top of the of the sleeve it depends on you at your discretion so i'm just going to be using the fabric that's left here and then i'm going to be slanting it from there to the end of the fabric the remaining part of the fabric now you can try to make it fuller than this because the fuller the better the fuller the material the uh, the the sleeve the better so you know it depends on what you want like and since it's going to be one sided sleeve like you can just play around with it, do whatever you want to do with it so we're just going to just slant it from this big this place to all the way to the end of the dress all the way down to give it this slanted effect now i tell you if this was fuller than this it would have been way finer so we're going to go ahead and you know and cut this out where's my scissors I'll cut it out okay here we are so i'm going to go ahead and fold in with one inch fold the edges with one inch that's half inch folded twice and then from the edges where we're going to put in the elastic when you are folding it you have to be very sure that you are using at least half an inch or more than half an inch to fold it so that when you put your elastic it is going to fit perfectly the elastic band we're using the width is half an inch so you need to have at least half an inch or more for the space where you are putting it so that it will relax properly it gives it better effect so please don't forget to do that so when you are folding it in be sure to take out more than half an inch or exactly half an inch so that when you are passing through your elastic you're going to get exactly what you want i'm just going to arrange this uh, back piece and um we are going to take out the dart. So to take out the dart, we are going to be marking in exactly the dart we marked when we were drafting it, which is 4 inches. Now, since it's the back piece, we are going to be including the 1 inch for zip allowance. And that 1 inch for zip allowance, remember, we, we removed half an inch from one side to give us a perfect zip so that the zip will not budge. So we are going to be marking, including that half an inch when we are marking the 4 inches. So we are marking 5, five inches in all. And we're just going to use our straight ruler to connect it to connect it and so when you make this you can mark up to six inches or seven inches upwards from the beginning of the top you can go upwards and if you are using your full length from the shoulder line it is going to be from a shoulder line up to say 12 inches or 11.5 inches 
when you are marking then you take out the dart for this dress the dart we are using is one and a half inch remember so it's 0 0.75 inch on both sides and i'm just going to connect them like this okay we're going to go ahead and then also do the same thing for the other sides and do it the same thing on the z on the lining piece so i have sewn i've joined them together i've joined them together here this is it i've not ironed this yet and uh you turn it open it's not yet ironed so it's a bit rough yeah this is it <clears throat> it's taking shape like for once it's taking shape um so when you want to iron this you are going to open it up open the same line and you iron this flat like so all the way round to the end you're going to do the same thing on this other side and you do the same thing also for the lining piece here's the lining piece and you look at the lining piece even even with that padding look at it, it it's coming out real good on its own so i'm going to iron it open as well and uh, so when i'm done ironing it i'm going to close up this side i'm going to use it use the lining to conceal the top of the dress i'm going to conceal all of this sewing inside we're going to sew is the back piece i've taken out the dots that as well and it's yet to be ironed so i'm going to go ahead and iron all of this now and then for the back piece as well i'm also going to use this lining piece to cover it up to sew the top of the dress i've done the ironing uh look at it that's for the back see how flat is laying i've ironed it and i've joined the cover the top stitch here here is the second piece for the back this is the front piece also neatly ironed and uh, and I've covered the top with the lining piece we're going to also go ahead and iron this to keep it flat have to iron this place too to keep it flatter so ironed it and opening the seam line and using a stay to keep it open okay so now what's left to do is um i'm going to be joining the sides because we want to do an inseam finishing this is what i'm going to do i'm going to join the sides like so i'm going to open it up this is the back piece place it like this front to front and back side to back side so lining piece to lining piece I'm going to run a straight stitch holding this together like so from here use taking out the sewing allowance for the side the side sewing allowance that I have added to the measurement we're going to be taking it out in a long in a straight stitch I'll do that for this side and do the same thing for this side leaving only the zip line open so I'm going to go ahead and do that come back and we we'll see how we're going to completely conceal the rest of the dress all right, so I have um, I've joined the sides. Okay, this is the extension of it. I've joined the sides. This is it. This is the side, the side seam and the side seam. So I'm going to just cover this up now so it will make sense. This is it. So if you have to fold here like so, this is it. So. Yeah. This is the one and a half inch sewing allowance. This is the one and a half inch sewing allowance. So if you have to cover this like so, this being the front piece, you can have this like this and this like this. This is the back. And this is the front. Okay. Now this is it. This is the front. This is the back. And we are trying to cover everything to give it a perfect inseam finishing. Now, in this, in the light of this, that is why we have this the front the the Ankara piece having uh, been one inch longer than the 
lining piece so what i'm going to do now is turn it over like this and cover it this is the down part i'm going to just open it like this and cover it with the lining the lining piece and i'm going to go ahead and sew and run a straight stitch holding all the lining the lining piece and the, the body together so you can pin this down and pin it down that to that same line to same line that line to that line and sew all the way when you sew to the end you will turn it out sew to the end when i run this stitch from here from this edge from the one one end of the zip uh, allowance to the all, all the way down to the end of the other zip allowance i'm going to come here top stitch it a little bit here so sew, sew it down leaving one small space where I can, I can turn the whole fabric all inside out so i'm going to go ahead and do that turn it inside out and i'll show us what next to do i've sewn it so i have sewn the down part of the dress from the and the one end of the zip allowance all the way to the other end of the zip allowance and then i also went ahead to sew from this top from the top here leaving a little bit of an allowance here that i can use to turn the whole dress inside out and i sewed the edge and here i sewed all the way down so this is the dress now i'm supposed to i'm, I'm going to turn it inside out but before i do that there is something i really have to attach to the dress now I'll be needing to iron here and for me to iron here down so that it will be properly ironed I need a uh, hemming gum I'll be, I'll be putting this hemming gum all the way like this so that when I iron it it will stay flat but I will pin this from, ins from the uh, inside because once I turn it inside out I might not be able to get out the pins and you won't leave pin in somebody's dress even though it's mine so i'm going to cut a bit of this place open because my hand can't fit in i'm going to open it up a little bit let me loosen it up a little bit so i'm going to take this pin pass it through going to hold it down from here I'm going to go ahead and pin all of it the hemming gum or the top of the front part the bustier area I've pinned it all the way to the end of the front area and the pin i pinned it from inside out so that when i turn it out the pin will be in the position where i can easily pull it out all right so now i'm going to go ahead and pull this dress or pull it out from the inside so that we can see what we have done All right, here it is. I've pulled it inside out. And if you look at it, you see that the dress is already taking shape. Now I'm going to go ahead and iron it. Let me iron it and iron this uh, stay area. This place, the top, and then let's finish off this dress. <clears throat> I've done it. Um, here it is. This is the front part and this is the back piece. This is it. It is now completely inseam finished. So all the rough edges is now concealed inside. This is the front. This is the one side of the back piece and this is the other side. So here. So if you fold this in like so and fold here in like this, you will have the beautiful top we are making this is it all 
all right so what i'm going to go ahead and do now is attach the zip so the zip i'm just going to start from the down because we want it to be able to open it completely when i want to wear it be able to open it completely so i'm going to start from the down like so and pin it and sew from the back of the zip to attach it but this opening here where we pass the whole fabric is what uh, out from we're just going to close it up like this by folding it in with quarter of an inch three quarter of an inch and we're going to top stitch it we're going to top stitch here to close here to keep it neat and then attach the zip and then the top is almost ready now here is the exaggerated sleeve that we cut i've gone ahead to hem the edges hem the down part and we hemmed the top now if you look at this top part that i hemmed i did not iron it because that's where i'm going to be passing the elastic and this is the elastic i'm going to be passing through it you can take a measurement of your arm to know how uh, where it to be most comfortable and of course so you can also pull it to your shoulder when you want to wear it like a, a dress that has a shoulder now i'm going to be passing this elastic through this using this loop toner and i want to believe you know how to use a loop toner if you are a returning subscriber you would know how to use a loop toner because we are always using loop toner but if you are a new subscriber or you're just showing up today we're more than happy to have you so this is it i'm passing i pass through the loop toner from here to the end while you pull the fabric to one corner now you're going to hook the elastic with the loop toner and then you lock the loop toner right lock it up and then you will gently pull it back inside and like i said gently because you can pull it and everything will go in so you're going to gently pull it and when you get where every part of the elastic has gone inside you are going to hold it down with a pin like this Now holding it down with a pin will now help you keep it in place so it will not get pulled out completely. And then you will gently pull out the rest and get to the end as well here. And you hold it down again with a pin. Now this is it. This is the elastic. The elastic is now fully in place for the sleeve. Now we're going to go ahead and join this sleeve all the way from here. To the end so i'm going to go ahead and join this with half of an inch or one or quarter, a quarter of an inch and all the way down all right i've finished it off i've sewn it here we are here's the zip i'm here to iron it though do the final ironing here is the zip we've put the zip so it's open and this is the opening that i said i'm going to sew together we have done it sewn it together like this top stitched it and here we are so you want to zip it you hook the zip and you zip and this is it now this is a sleeve we have prepared our exaggerated sleeve so what we're going to do now is take the ending of the, uh, the sleeve Okay, meanwhile, let me show you something else I did on the sleeve. After joining the sleeve, if you look closely, you see that I folded it in the same way I folded in this zip area, this pieces. Folded it in and top stitched it. I also did the same thing here, folded it in and top stitched it and just sewed on it. So it felt like a folding instead. So now there will be no, no need for any shredding. So we are done with that part. Okay, so now I'm turning it inside out so that will show us how we will attach it to the dress. Okay, so this, you can now decide which part of this, which part, where, uh, whether you want the sleeve on the right or on the left. And I, for one, I think I want it on the right. So this is my right. So I'm going to go ahead and take it. Take the zip, the joining part, the sleeve, the joining part of the sleeve, you take it and you will place it at the um side seam allowance side seam of the uh, right side and you're just going to pin it together and then sew gently you can sew at the distance of just one inch 
from here half inch on this side half inch on this side you just sew in that distance hold it down and that's it once you hold it down that's it we have a sleeve that can stay as an off shoulder and if you want it on the shoulder you can also take it up now the next time you see this it will be on my body or on the mannequin and we're going to do a little video of it and the pictures so um thank you so much for watching to the end um if this video had helped you in any way please do not forget to um, give it a thumbs up and um and if you have not subscribed to my channel please and please subscribe and um you can share this video with your friends so that this our little community can grow and it will encourage me to do more videos as well because the more people who join us and um the more um, I will be encouraged to do more videos. And like I always say, if you have any requests or any styles you want me to try, please don't forget to drop them in the comment section and we're going to consider it. Thank you so much and I love you. Bye. See you in my next video.